Hello everybody, this is Con and you are looking at the Westar Maxxis uh, G10 SE 10-seater MPV. Now, the Westar Maxxis G10 has been with us since 2016. Uh, the vehicle that you see here, the SE spec model, was introduced only this year uh, in June 2017. Okay, uh, This 10-seater MPV is priced at 158,000 ringgit without insurance okay its nearest competitor is the uh hyundai grand star x royal it is an that one is an 11 seater priced at 164,000 ringgit uh, under the same terms the g10 and the star x are leather frame based okay so they are they are front engine rear wheel driven and you know they like a little refinement compared to the other monocoque uh monocoque chassis mpv but the upside is that these cars are a bit more robust and will uh, and, uh, and you know and they better handle uh, rough terrain. Of course, this is not something that you go off road with, lah. Huh? But still, so look at the side profile. This is a very straightforward, very boxy uh, MPV. Even as you can see, the the profile is very uh, reminiscent, very similar to the Star X that it competes directly against. Okay, so let's take a close up. So these are the headlamps uh, with LED DRLs, the multi-spoke rims. Here you see these are power sliding doors. Okay, so one touch power sliding doors. Now the uh, Westar Maxxis is built by actually by uh, China's SAIC uh, Motor Corporation. So you can see many of its uh, there are a lot of you know of uh, these signs that show its Chinese origins. Now of course unlike uh, you know. The, some of the more shoddy Chinese made cars that we have seen in recent times the uh, Maxxis G10 is a, f a, a, more, a much more polished product okay it is still not to the level of a Japanese or continental uh, vehicles but the level of polish and refinement to, in this car as we will see uh, later in this video is uh, it demonstrates an impressive leap by uh, where Chinese uh, car making quality is concerned. So as you can see here are LED tail lights, right? Just the rear view. Now notice down there, those are rear fog lamps. Okay, now let me show you this pathway. Now you see this space here. Okay, this space here. Now uh, the Maxxis G10 has 360 degrees surround view camera. Okay, here's the reverse camera. The camera under the side mirror and here's the front facing camera so inside the maxis g10 okay so here is the very continental uh feel uh you know a headlight switch rotary headlight switch okay uh engine start stop button okay so here is the uh, instrument cluster it is a very uh neat very simple looking instrument cluster some red uh, hues to give it a bit of a sporty feel but let's not be fooled so you cycle you use this a little rotary knob to cycle the uh the display on the on the trip computer okay uh so these are the various functions available in the trip computer you can use this press this menu button to to change the various settings and be careful when you press reset because resetting uh reset here not only resets everything to to factory uh, default setting it also resets the language to chinese so if you ever remember if you ever accidentally uh press that reset and turn everything into chinese be sure to press menu and go to the first uh, uh item on the list so that's language and you access that and you can change it back to english okay so now moving aside now this is uh, the brochures of this car tell you that there is a 15 inch touchscreen but don't be fooled by it because when you switch this on okay um, this part of the screen is just a large digital clock okay it is a screen okay but it serves no touch function the only touch function is available in this portion of the screen which is clearly demarcated here by this shadow so you press home this uh, allows you to access the various functions of the of the infotainments of this actually 
a rather rud rudimentary uh, infotainment system lah. Okay, uh, the display, the graphic displays are not the most uh, sophisticated in the market, but at this price level, it is, uh, if you ask me, entirely acceptable. Okay, uh, there is a three, this one was uh, through the screen. Uh, it also displays the 360 degree uh, camera, which I will show you. Uh, you activate a 360 degree camera either by putting the transmission into reverse, okay, or uh, there's this button here on the dashboard which you press to activate the 360 degree camera as well. Okay, so uh, the image is well not exactly very crisp, but it's good enough. Okay, that uh, it it shows you what are the surrounding obstacles uh, around your car that you may want to avoid. Most importantly, uh, if for a vehicle with such large blind spots, you want to be absolutely sure that there are no small animals or children in your your vehicle's vicinity before you move off so this is despite the less than spectacular clarity i'd say it's a very very good feature to have now pay note to this uh this this divider here uh, i'll be getting down to show you just using this divider just to illustrate what how far is the coverage of this 360 degree camera actually covers this entire space as marked by uh, this little divider here so it goes from the back all the way to the front here and the around so it gives you a very complete 360 degree picture uh, of the car's surroundings oops grammar alert okay now coming back to the cabin now scroll coming down here these two are the uh, power power door con internal power door controls you can switch off the power sliding doors okay uh, this row controls the infotainment system. This is the climate control. Okay, uh, you can con you can separately control the front and rear blower speeds. Okay, uh, yep, you can adjust front blower speed and here's rear blower speed. Okay, and here's the temperature control. So, ah, remote fuel fuel lead release. Uh, this is the, the the 360 degree camera switch mentioned hazard light switch uh stability control okay uh now this down here this is uh this is this is just an empty all the way down to the empty floor um you can use this space to put large bulky items as you move about so let's say when you are on a, on a long distance trip this is where maybe you can put your bag of snacks or what or drinks okay so pushing this here opens up a, a cup holder Okay, one of those uh, pop-out cup holders. Okay, this is another little pocket here which you can you can slot your 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 smart tag or or cards. Okay, of course there's another side drawer here. Okay, which 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 does the same function. Okay, you can you can use this to slot various small items. It's actually quite deep. It's actually quite deep. Okay. Now coming back into the middle here. Okay, open this, and you see this is a huge compartment. This is this is my my Nikon D5200 uh, DSLR camera it swallowed the whole camera and there is still space for more coming back here's another small uh, cubby hole and op this opens up to review another two cup holders okay uh, lastly here's the dashboard here's the glove box okay now the overall material selection uh, on in this cabin okay uh, as you can see, it's not. It's some of it is, uh, you know, very plush looking. Like you can see from this stitching here and this, you know, this flush uh, air vents and all that. They try to create a bit of a premium touch. Look at all this chrome lining. Okay, uh, but once you touch it, you know straight away that this is not uh, the same league of materials as you would find in, say, a Volkswagen or a Ford or a Mercedes-Benz. But still, it is functional enough and, you know, uh, in terms of alignment, okay, in terms of the, uh, the alignment of gaps is satisfactory, okay, and the overall construction feels solid enough to last the test of time. So, uh, once again, like, pretty much like, uh, as you would see from other parts of the car, not the best in the market, but certainly not the worst and definitely serviceable enough. 
okay so this part here is the sunglass holder okay uh, and you can control these are the, the the lights right okay now this is one little com little complaint now as you can see this is the sunroof a manual sunroof right but this one right it does not there is no way to I'm not sure if this is unique to this particular car but there is no way to keep this uh, Hold, hold this in place. I mean, now that now that you see it secure, ah, there you see it popped open by itself. Now, as mentioned earlier, the uh, G10 has uh, powered sliding doors, which you can open by remote. Right. So let's step inside. Now, uh, these the second row seats they are adjustable forward backward. I've put them in the forward most position. Uh, this allow this gives you better access to the rear. Let me uh, before I get inside also allow me to show you. Uh, this is the this is this ac opens access to a 12 volt socket as well as a three pin plug. So this is useful to charge your laptop or any other devices that uh, that you that you may have. You need to power on the move. Okay. Now, as you can see, these seats are ISOFIX compliant. Don't mind this. I I have purpose, I, I deliberately let, let, uh, left this loose hanging so that I can adjust this seat forward and backwards. Okay, so right now uh, I have the seats uh, in its this this second row seats in its frontmost position. Okay, so I still have this much of room available. Okay, this much of room available. All right now, adjust the seat all the way back. I've got. This much of room available. Also here in the middle row, uh, the outer two passengers have access to uh, three-point seat belts, whereas the middle passenger here gets two-point seat belts. Okay, so here at the back, these seats are furthest forward. These seats also as far front as they can. I've got very good leg room. This I've got this much of leg room, right? So it's enough for me to cross my legs a bit. Okay, like a boss, can pull the seat a bit further back. Okay, to give up, get 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 even more space. But uh, be be what be mindful that go pushing these seats further back means that the back row okay cannot be folded forward to get more luggage space. Okay, so. If you want to fold these uh, back row seats forward uh, to get more cargo room, you need these seats to be as far front as possible. So here at the back, um, okay, uh, the seats, these seats have to be furthest forward in order to give you any meaningful amount of room here at the back. Uh, I have good headroom, okay, I have this much of leg room so once again this is uh, enough space for me to cross my feet right uh, the rear this rear bench seats three uh, each of them with uh, individual headrests and also even the middle passenger here gets a three-point belt it, it, lastly it is also worth noting that uh, each row of passengers get a dedicated row of aircon wens so let's see the boot space now if you're care if you're setting your maxis G10 to carry 10 passengers, you are not going to have any room for their cargo. So to free up space for cargo, uh, what you need to do is to fold these seats down and it is a two-step process. Actually, no, it's a three-step process. So first you pull this lever to fold this seat back down. Pull this one to fold this seat back down as well. And then you pull this one up. So it is not uh, it is not a one touch folding mechanism, but it is simple enough and the mechanism feel uh, solid enough uh, that it's, it, it is capable of being able to withstand multiple rounds of usage. How much cargo you can put here? Allow me to demonstrate. One stroller, one backpack. Good enough for a family like this. Okay, now the engine powering the G10, okay, is a two liter turbocharged petrol engine. Now, don't be fooled by the transverse orientation of this engine cover. As you can see from how the pulleys are aligned, this is actually a longitudinally mounted engine, okay? So it's, uh, it the engine is oriented lengthwise, okay, relative to the car and sends power to the rear wheels okay why a z 
ZF 6-speed automatic transmission, okay? It is the ZF 6HP automatic transmission that was used in previous generation BMW models like, you know, the E65 series and the E90 uh, 3 series. Now, typically for a vehicle this, uh, this size and, and mass, right, we expect a large capacity petrol engine or a diesel, okay? Uh, this one, quite unusually, uh, sports a 2-litre turbocharged petrol engine. Uh, so, performance-wise, okay, it's uh, it's adequate lah, in the sense that <coughs> you can get it up to speed, but there are times, okay, there are times that you feel that this is still a task better suited to either a, a big CC engine or a turbo diesel, okay? Uh, there is no escaping the fact that uh, there are times that you know the, the engine sometimes struggles to pull the weight of this vehicle but the flip side is that <clears throat> once this engine comes on song okay uh, that's when it start it uh, it continues to build up speed quite effortlessly it is just when in on occasions where you know let's say like you you're moving along okay uh, then you slow down for say a speed bump or a slower vehicle in front and then when you when you want to gather pace again right there is that momentary flat spot that you know that holds you back a little before the the the, the boost spools up and, and propels you forward again but once you know once it gathers the momentum then it picks up speed uh, quite effortlessly so overall i'd say the decision to uh to you to put a two liter turbocharged engine into this vehicle is uh it's unusual uh i would say it is it is quite brilliant actually because it it attracts the attention of uh you know of those upgrading from a passenger car and would not care to pay to suddenly jump uh in to paying road tax of you know of a 2.5 or 3 liter uh, engine okay so having a 2 liter turbo petrol engine uh, it gives you that level of performance thereabouts okay uh, without a significant penalty in your road tax and also uh, understandably there are some family buyers who are who despite the benefits uh, the fuel economy and the benefits as well as you know the superior torque of a diesel engine is put off by the smell of diesel fumes when the when the engine idles. Personally, uh, I would still I would still much prefer a diesel to go for a car this size. But I fully understand the appeals of a petrol engine in this case, and I would say that it is a a brilliant call uh, to offer this uh, this this engine option uh, with the G10. Now, handling wise, uh, the G10 still does not feel as well sorted uh, as its closest competitor, which is the Hyundai Star X. Uh, the Star X, despite, feel, despite in general, okay, in terms of its finishing and all that and features, despite feeling a, starting to feel like a bit of a last generation product, still has that uh, better bal chassis balance. Uh, you know when you when you when you drive and when you take a, take a corner and all that to drive the Star X uh, simply put feels more planted along the highways it the Star X feels that you know it has a lower center of gravity than the G10 uh, but that being all being said the G10 drives well enough I mean it has that natural balance of a front engine rear wheel driven vehicle so it's not half bad on the aspect of comfort the G10 uh, delivers what is expected of it the right quality is sufficiently supple that you know uh, your passengers are unlikely to feel perturbed by speed bumps or potholes or whatever not so you know it is a car that you know you can carry on you can traverse over poor surfaces without worrying about the comfort of your passengers sound insulation too is pretty impressive um, this car is very refined on the move it is only when you have to dial a few extra revs 
on the engine that the overall atmosphere of serene calmness is punctured but otherwise uh, it drives you know it is a very very comfortable place to be in to cover a, a lot of kilometers uh, at one go oh and one more thing the turning radius of this car is brilliant check this out huh? let me show you that again on the front view Right, so uh, as you've been watching in all the in-car shots, you will notice that this section, the climate control section, the, sque the screen is flashing and dancing about, okay? Uh, but in reality, it's it does not look anywhere near as spectacular. This is just an illusion created by the mismatch in frame rates as well as the refresh rate of the uh, LCD screen, okay? So that's a phenomenon you can read up on, on online. Lah. Okay, coming back to the uh, G10, the G10, as mentioned earlier, this is a close competitor of the Hyundai Starrex. So naturally, its merits has to be uh, benchmarked against the Starrex. And I can sum it up to you in this. At 158,000, 10-seater, um, the value proposition versus the Starrex is thereabouts the same. Okay, uh, The Starrex seats one extra person, but... Uh, Pay, you pay an extra 10,000 ringgit for that. Uh, the Starrex has a more economical and more powerful 2.5 litre turbo diesel engine uh, that it means that the Starrex is able to pull its weight more effortlessly. Okay, uh, The Starrex also feels better sorted dynamically. The sh it, when you drive the Starrex, it just feels that that car has a lower center of gravity it feels better balanced than this one uh, so yeah dynamically the Starrex is still more it still instills more confidence behind the wheel when you are driving the plus side to this car okay is that it offers roughly this it offers the same thereabouts the same level of uh, you know volume inside cabin space okay uh, but more it, it feels the interior the cabin the whole f all the finishings of this car feels more up to date than the Starrex that's one uh, it uh, the, the build quality also feels better like, at least the perceived build quality feels better I'm not saying the Starrex is poorly built but naturally the, the, the selection of materials and all it feels very last generation this one feels more contemporary right the driving uh, of course this being a two liter petrol engine okay even though it's turbocharged okay you see on paper 225 horsepower but at the end of the day this engine still feels like it is punching way over its wing and um, yeah so you get you get a more the engine sounds more refined than the Starrex on the move. The Starrex feels still feels very commercial grade. You know when you when you when you revisit the kara 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 kara, the diesel clatter. This one does not. This one sounds a lot better. Uh, and but but the, the the flip side is that there are times that when you catch this engine in a flat spot, you rarely catch the Starrex's engine in a flat spot. So. The Starrex pulls better, but this one pulls more refined lah, if you like, okay? Um, also, also, the Starrex being a diesel engine, uh, you get that diesel fumes when you stand, when you're standing around it. This car does not have that, right? So, uh, in some, in summation, what the, the G10 offers is that it offers roughly the same preposition as the Starrex, but it feels more updated, yeah. Uh, it th does away with the clatter of a diesel engine, but the trade-off is that you have to live with slightly higher fuel consumption. The trip computer here is reading 16.2 liters per 100 kilometer. You will definitely better this in the Starrex's diesel engine, all right, definitely. Um, and of course, this being a two liter engine, your road tax bill is also a lot lower. So that sums up, sums it up 
uh, on the G tanks preposition, okay, uh, and concludes this video. Uh, <clears throat> as this, by the time this video is uh, published, my review on Kalis.my should have gone up first already. The e link is included in the description section below. Have a read on that. I've also included the the story, the launch uh, report that was published earlier this year. Have a read on that as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Until my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.